Yeah, Andrea, um, just kind of what were what are your, I guess, what do you remember about the 2019 um, appearance? And obviously, wasn't the result you all wanted, but just kind of that whole experience and getting to start in a tournament game and everything that you remember from that trip. Um, you know, the one thing that obviously I remember is losing, which isn't the best, but um. Um, I would say like it's really different honestly right now and what I can remember from that trip is you know we got to be around each other a lot more and then um, you know practices were a little different setup um, everything was just kind of different I mean I, I can barely remember how it, everything was because I feel like the norm that it is now is what it has always been so it's kind of hard to remember what it was like. And from what you've seen so far of uh, Bradley on film, what are, your, what are your kind of impressions on this team and the challenges that they're going to present to you? Um, they're, I mean, some from what we've seen, they typically have about four shooters on the court, sometimes five at all times. So, you know, that's kind of um, kind of compare them to like in Iowa State because uh, how well that they can shoot the ball. So, um, you know, we're really trying to focus on transition defense because if you don't find shooters early, they're going to, They'll, they'll find them they know what they're looking for so that's what we're that's what we know we're um, working on right now john hi go ahead audrey uh, with not a lot of experience on this team of, of players being in the ncaa's how 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 much do you stress the importance of, of giving it your all with especially with all the upsets you see in in yeah. tournaments um you know we we're stressing more on the fact that you know it's don't look at it as um, this big, like you have to win every game. Like we're looking at it. We try to like show them that it's just one game at a time. It's no different than um, playing like a non-conference game or something. It's just focus on the game. Don't stress about it too much, but you know, like this is important. So although we do stress the fact that this is a very important game, we also stress that, you know, it's just like any other game, go out there and play your game. So. But is that easier said than done when you're dealing with, with yes. young players? It is easier said than done because I think I know I like when I was when I was a freshman going to the tournament, I was like, wow, like, look at all. Look at this setup. We're in a whole different place. We're playing at a new court. Like all this is very stressful. But um, I think these freshmen are a lot. Uh, they're a little more calm than I think I was as a freshman. At least. Thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Chris, go ahead. Hey, Audrey, two questions for you. One. How aware are you as one of the veterans on this team and the team as a whole of the fact that only four of y'all have been at an NCAA tournament, only three of y'all have actually played in an NCAA tournament? How, how cognizant are you of that? Um, like I said before, you know, it's, it is hard not having a lot of experience. Um, that's why I think it's just easier to go into this looking at it like it's just another game um because I mean it's going to be played like any other game you know nothing's different calls aren't different everything is the same it's just um I guess the title of it is different so and and secondly what's it like getting ready for a tournament with with Vic Schaefer as your head coach how is is he any different what's what's the prepar preparation like with him um I won't say he's different you know he's taking this um kind of the same way you know it's another game he stresses how important it is um he tells us a lot about like all the upsets and like how teams have been losing in their upsets so um you know like box outs are critical making certain shots are critical you know just really knowing like teams are going to be different in this kind of scenario thank you Cedric you're up hi Audrey uh, I know the college basketball world's buzzing over the men losing uh, to Abilene Christian. Do you guys discuss that? And did you watch? And uh, what were your thoughts on that? Um, yeah, we did watch. Uh, I mean, you know, very, very sad for our boys. But, um, you know, both teams played really well. So I'm just, you know, those turnovers were really critical. Shots were really critical. Um, it, you know, it, it just makes you go into this knowing like, hey, any given day, any team can show up and play. So, you just got to play your game and make sure you're executing and um, doing what you prepared for. Yeah. And also it's been a long way for you guys uh, to get to this game. Uh, what have y'all done to pass the time? Uh, are you having any cabin fever and um, you know, how, how excited are you to finally get on the court against a real opponent? 
um, very excited to finally play. I just, you know, I woke up this morning and was like, oh, wow, we play tomorrow. It's been like, you know, basically a whole week is what it's felt like. But, um, you know, we've been, we've got to do like activities in a meeting room. Um, we get certain blocks of time. We stretch together. Uh, we go outside. Like today we went outside and took a walk. Um, you know, we're not totally kept up in this room, but uh, it is it is a little different because we can't like hang out with each other in our rooms and like we only have certain blocks of time to be around each other so but i know we're very excited for tomorrow got a couple last ones in the queue we'll go emily first then danny the last one hi audrey um i'm curious what your feelings were emotions with the uh weight room situation between the men and the females um you know i'm just kind of with everybody else, you know, it was um, upsetting to see the difference, but um, I mean, we can't, we can't control, we can only, uh, you know, we make do with what we can. So, and although it was surprising, but we're, we weren't too worried about it because, you know, we're, we're, we can't control it. And that's what we're focused on is what we can't control. So. Last one to you, Danny. Audrey, I'm curious if you feel, I guess there wouldn't be a disadvantage since everyone's in the kind of the same boat, but do you feel there's not being able to be together all the time? And I mean, you're obviously chilling in your room right now without a roommate, you know, this kind of just weird distancing. Do you think that it will be a hindrance at all when it comes to the on-court product or are those just different things? Um, I do think I thought that from since the beginning of the season, you know, we knew going into this with the pandemic and everything and how everything is that we wouldn't get to hang up, hang around each other as much um, outside or out, off the court. Um, so I guess like right now, it's not so much different as is, as if we were like at home right now. But um, I do think that plays into um, how you play together. So I do think even since the beginning of the season, it does hinder um, really all teams, especially ours. Just, I mean, chemistry is, is a key component of playing together and um, not being able to hang out with each other outside or off the court is, is very sad. So. It's been a long week. Um, you know, we've kids have done a great job. I'm awfully proud of them. They continue to practice um, safety and, and good health. And so I'm, I'm, uh, I'm really proud of them. We've had some good practices. We had a great one yesterday at Texas State where we're going to play. Uh, we've got one more day of prep today. Uh, we'll have a good film session tonight. We've got a study hall for uh, some of them this evening. And uh, we just walked, a, probably walked, um, you know, the city a little bit just to get out and stretch our legs a little bit this morning before we uh, have practice this afternoon over in the convention center. You know, we only get one day of uh, one 90 minute practice in the facility that we're gonna play in and you get no shoot around on day of game. So it really makes it a challenge um, for us because we're big on preparation and, and just making sure we've gone through everything with our kids right up to game time. So there's a little uncomfortability with that with, uh, with our staff and myself, but our kids have been really focused. And, uh, you know, we have a great group uh, that, that really prepares us in Jazz, Katerra, our men's practice players, our managers that are allowed to do what they do. So um, our kids are ready. I think they're antsy and anxious. Certainly we're, you know, uh, they, they know what's at stake. And uh, so I'm anxious to, I mean, I, I'm always anxious to see us play the next one. So I'm anxious to see us play tomorrow night. Danny, go ahead. Vic, this week, a lot of your colleagues have been very vocal about their views on gender and the differences between the men and the women games and how y'all are treated. And I was kind of wondering if we could get your opinion and your thoughts on that, on that topic and some of the issues that arose this past week. Yeah, well, I, mean, I think it's been well documented, Danny, and I don't think anybody can dispute that. Um, you know, uh, I've always been, you know, someone even going back to, you know, when I took the job at, at Mississippi State and they told me, you know, we'd, we'd be looked at this way or we'd be, you know, and I'm, I'm talking about our university and, 
and and some things that I'm like I'm tell I told them then I said well look I'm not here to I'm not here to finish second I'm here to, I'm, I'm here to win and I want to be given the same opportunities to win as everybody else and um, and and you know this the same thing is true for my kids I want I want the same thing for them that you know that 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 they deserve and um, you know again I, I don't think there's any question the powers that be kicked it there's no question about that. I don't, I don't think I need to remind them of that. I think there's been enough people that have come out and, and, and they're all right. They're absolutely right. And, you know, I've been in this game a long time. I've seen a bunch and there ain't enough time for me to, to go through everything. So again, today's the day we start our games, get on the TV and watch our games and support our game. And, um, at the same time, it's the same reason why I'm at Texas, Danny, because I believe at Texas, I know at Texas, every sport is equally as important, men or women. And for me as a women's basketball coach, I know that women's basketball is extremely important at Texas and they want to win and they want to win a championship. They want to win championships. That's why I'm there. If I didn't believe that, I would have never come to come to the University of Texas. So from that standpoint, I believe I'm in a in the best place I can possibly be. Does our game need some adjusting? A a absolutely. And I think now with everything that's happened, it's probably going to happen. Uh, but it's it's it should have never come to this, Danny. John, hi. Go ahead. Uh, coach, I guess I'll, I'll get a little back to the game. Um, you said your girls are, are, are ready. How how do you stress, um, you know, the importance of upsets? I mean, we've seen, you know, your man, uh, Audrey said she watched them. Um, does that help when they see stuff like that to, to take this really seriously? Well, yeah, I mean, John, I, I don't think there's any question our kids will take it seriously. You know, my concern is not are we going to take it seriously? My concern is bright lights, big moment. How do you, you know, or, or am I going to, you know, I need to make sure our kids are loose and, and playing freely. That's my concern. I, I want them to, I want them to go out there and turn it loose and, and, and just go enjoy the moment and play. Uh, I think if you're all tied up, it's hard to function. Now, again, I think they've seen enough upsets on the men's side to understand that, but we've seen it this year. So let's just, we don't need to see or, or talk about what's happened here in the last two days. We've seen it throughout the season. I mean, we'd probably like to have two or three games back, quite frankly, John, we had no business losing in my mind. Now, and again, no disrespect, but that's just the way it is. But I was talking to Charlie and, and Kyra this morning and in and, and the bottom line is this, John, you, you might play somebody in the NCAA tournament and you go, well, they 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 got nothing to lose and everything to gain and they're going to be loose and, you know, they're going to – that's true, but we've seen that every – in my mind, we get that every game because we got Texas on our chest. We get everybody's best shot. So we're going to get their best shot tomorrow night. Okay, that's just like the other 27 games we've played this year, right? So uh, from that standpoint, I think my kids are used to that. And also, is it is it good that um, you don't have a lot of experience or bad? I mean, because they go in not, really not knowing. Yeah, check with me tomorrow night about nine <laughs> nine o'clock. I'll I'll tell you. Uh, <laughs> you know, sometimes when you're young, it's you know you're young and you don't you're too young to know what what it's all about and and the in the weight of the situation. Um, I think you can flip it around too, though. And and when you're an old veteran team, you you know as you play the game and it stays close, the tighter it gets for that team that's supposed to be all this and that. And so I don't think we qualify really as either one. I mean, I do think we're young and inexperienced still, but at the same time, I, I do think that our kids will be excited. And, and I know I am, I know my staff, we're, <laughs> this has been quite an experience, you know, doing what we've done here the last, you know, five days and, and, uh, you know, we got one more night uh, and then we got to play tomorrow. So this is what you work for all year long. Now you got to go out and, and you just got to go play. Thanks. Cedric Golden, go ahead. 
Hey Vic, um, two questions. Uh, what was your first reaction to those images of the lack of workout facilities? And number two, why in the hell are we still having these conversations in 2021? It's beyond me, Cedric. I really, it, it's so disappointing. And again, I just, I just think you, you know, it's all about leadership. Look, if anybody, any person makes a mistake in my organization, in my program, you know what? It's on me. That's how I feel about it. I'm accountable. Um, whether they, they are on my staff, they're part of my program, they're one of my student athletes. At the end of the day, they're my responsibility. So I'm accountable. And I think what was most disheartening and disappointing was just the lack of accountability and trying to throw it to this person or that person instead of, you know what, I'm the head of this deal and, and I need to be accountable. And I think that's the, the disappointment in all of it. Um, it's a shame that we are having this conversation uh, in 2021. Um, I know my kids, they deserve the very, you know, they deserve equally whatever, what, what our, our counterparts get. Um, you know, they, they, they work just as hard if, in, in, in my mind, they work harder at times um, than, than, than some people. So I, I they warrant to me, they warrant the very best. And that's, you know, that's again, why I'm at Texas, Cedric. I feel like at Texas, that's what, that's who we are. We, you know, women's athletics is, is important at Texas. If it wasn't, I wouldn't be there. Um, you know, that's just how I feel. And so I, I feel like it, you know, I'm at the best place in the country where our kids are treated the best, provided the best opportunities to be the most successful they can possibly be. And, and that's where I want to be. And I know that's where our student athletes want to be and appreciate. So, you know, again, I think it starts in, you know, really to me, it starts and ends with leadership and a buck stops here type mentality. And it's just unfortunate that, you know, uh, to me, that's, that's where the biggest issue I had with it is, is that there's just not a lot of accountability. And, and, and as my dad would say, the Colonel, he'd say, you know what? Okay, now we got an issue. Let's take the bull by the horns and fix it. I mean, it shouldn't take two days, you know, to get something done like that. I mean, it, there's people around here that were ready to go to work and get it done within hours. And, and so, you know, again, uh, I think they fixed it. I know they realized they've made some mistakes, and and I think they've, you know, I think they've they've corrected it now. But it's disappointing that it got to that point. Thanks. Chris Tavares, you're up. Vic, how do you go about preparing for an NCAA tournament? Obviously, this year it's different. Like you mentioned, you only get 90 minutes, no day of walkthrough um, in your the court that you're going to be playing on the arena. But how do you go about getting things ready? And, and are you noticing that the girls are kind of caught off guard or it's not what they were expecting with the preparation for, for the tournament from what they might have been used to from a couple of years ago? Well, Chris, I'm not sure I have anybody on my team that's been in an NCAA tournament. I know Charlie might have been as a freshman, but obviously didn't, wasn't, you know, didn't play a lot. Um, Joe would have been on, on that team as a freshman. Audrey, again, as a freshman, but they didn't have a, you know, we didn't have one last year. So a lot of my team is really inexperienced and doesn't know anything other than what we're going through. Uh, again, Day of game tomorrow, we get no shoot around, no walkthrough. So we'll move tables around up in our ballroom, up in our team room, and we'll have a walkthrough up there. And we'll we'll tape up a bunch of newspaper and put some tape around it and have a ball. You know, actually we have balls with us, so we'll we'll take a ball in there and we'll go through out of bounds plays, half court sets, just like we would on game day. We just won't get any shots up, but. You know, today we'll have 90 minutes back over in the convention center, but that's not where we play. Yesterday was our 90 minutes that we got in the facility that we play in. So consequently, I spent a lot of time shooting, just making sure we were accustomed to the background and those types of things, you know, in that in that arena. So, um, you know, um, 
again, I, I think my staff, the veterans that we are, we, we've been able to adjust and, and we're ready. You know, our kids are going to be prepared there. I don't think there's any stone that's not toned, unturned with my staff getting the team ready uh, to play. And again, we've seen just about everything you can see this season, you know, styles of play. We've seen a ton of them. And so I, I think, you know, again, I think our kids are going to be excited and uh, they're going to be ready to go. I just, I need to make sure they're not too tight. I thought we were tight against Baylor early. I think we relaxed as the game went on. I thought that first five, eight minutes, we were really tight. And, uh, and so we need to make sure we're not really tight to open up tomorrow night. Last one over to you, Danny. Um, I have two. Uh, Vic, now that Charlie's gotten um, her APL American honors and obviously her stats are her stats, can you put into context exactly what she has accomplished this season? Danny, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you some statistics here real, real quick. She's the only Division I Power 5 player that has 12 double-doubles in conference, 17 overall. Okay, the next closest person to her ain't very close. I, I don't want to read the, misread this, the stats, but they're not even close. Like, it's not even close. Um, 30% of our scoring, 30% of our rebounds. I mean, you, you really, you have to understand how she's done it. Again, our guards are shooting the ball a lot better today than they were a month ago. But, you know, we've struggled shooting the ball from the perimeter at times this year, as you know. So consequently, Charlie's had two, three people hanging on her a lot of nights. And so it, it's, it's really amazing, um, you know, what she's been able to do, her stats. Uh, again, realizing that it's so hard to do at this level against the quality of competition and the quality of coaching that we go against every night. And I'm just, I'm, I'm really proud of her. I mean, I, I just, I think that, that to go from 13 and 10 to 21 and 12, uh, that's a big jump, Danny. That's a big jump. And, you know, again, I think she's worked really hard. I don't think anybody can ever question how hard the kid works, but she's done it again, night in and, and night out against, you know, really good players and, and really good coaching. So, um, again, you know, I'm, I'm hoping like heck she gets the Lisa Leslie Award because it is even more glaring. The, 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 the disparity between her stats and the stats of the other people in that group. I mean, it's not even close, Danny. You can do the research and, and, and or get with John, and he can give it to you, but it's – and I don't really want you to – I'm just giving you some information here, okay? Don't – you can do the work, okay? You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. But it's, it's really, there's a, it's really a big dis disparity. I mean, to me, she sets herself apart without question. And, and I think she's so deserving. Again, I've had somebody win that award. I know how hard it is. I know what it takes. And, and in my mind, she has absolutely done it. So um, I'm just really proud of her, you know. And then, you know, now that you've gotten a week or whatever to – check them out. You know, what are your impressions of this Bradley team? I'd imagine with the way that they got there, they're playing pretty fearless right now and they're going to be a, not an easy out. Yeah, no doubt. I don't think there's any question. They'll be put loose and fancy free. You know, they'll, they'll play with their hair on fire. And, and again, very similar to some teams that we've had to play against in the league. And, um, you know, I'm sure they'll, they'll get those films and see some of the things. And, and so we're going to have to really play well and uh, have great focus, concentration defensively. Um, obviously going to have to guard the three-point line, but then you're going to deal with some big guards that can go to the rim and finish. And, uh, and so you'll, you'll have to deal with that as well. Um, you'll have to deal with some, you know, some, some post players that can stretch you and shoot the three as well. And, and so um, at the same time, there's some areas that we feel like we can attack them, and, and we, can't, we can't not do that. 
you know, bottom line is we, we can't morph and, and do something that we're, you know, just get outside of who we are and what we do. We got to go be who we are. And I think if we do that, then we'll be fine.